has passed. And the reason I know this is because I was watching my watch, and it has a second hand, and it started at uh, 20 seconds after the minute, went all the way around, moved my minute hand once. One minute. Uncomfortable, isn't it? <laughs> Uncomfortable for you. Because here you are, you know, sitting waiting for something to happen, and nothing happened. Just the preacher stands up there with this look on his face, and you got to respond. And yet, that was a long minute, wasn't it, for you? And yet, think when you're having fun doing something, you realize how fast a minute passes, correct? So this morning, we're going to, we're looking, we're going to have this Christmas series that we're looking at, and uh, we're coming to understand this miracle of Christmas, this miracle of the coming of Jesus into our world, and just the exact right timing of God. That's what we're going to be looking at this morning. What does that mean? Let's talk about time just a minute. Do you know that there's only 23 days of the Christmas? Everybody's aware of that? Okay, the countdown is happening. That means there are approximately 542 hours until we celebrate the, the birth of Christ. That translates into 32,500 minutes. Only 32,500 minutes till Christmas is here. And so you're asking me, why did you just wait, uh, waste one precious minute of my time? Well, it was to get this point across. Timing is everything. Have you ever stopped to consider how important timing is to everything? Yeah, you know, um, as, as we're looking, here it is, December. One of the things that you know you don't normally do is you don't go out and plant tomatoes in the month of December. You might get away with it this week, but there's never bear fruit because you know it's going to be, you know, we're going to get a freeze, they're going to be killed. But timing is everything. You wait till um, uh, March or April to do that. Uh, you don't go swimming in your pool in January. It's just too cold. You know, it's not the right time. There's a right time for those kind of activities. And I think we would all agree, I think we would all agree that December is probably not the right time to start a diet. Do I hear any in on that? Yeah, well, why? Because we're talking about holiday parties and all those kind of things. It's just not the right time uh, to do that. Think about timing in sports. Uh, if the timing is off, between the quarterback and his receiver, that pass isn't going to be caught. If the timing is off from the basketball player to arrive at the spot so that he can catch the ball and dunk it, the timing is off just a little bit, it is not going to happen. And if you're the parent of a preschooler, you know that if you turn your head for just one minute, right? Just one minute, that preschooler could be gone, and you've got to go to the, you know, the scorpion and say, good bye, child, da 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 please come to the office, you know. It's that kind of thing. Timing is everything. Let me tell you something. As we look at God's Word today, one of the things that we realize is that timing was important <laughs> for God. Very important. And so we're going to consider that this morning. We're going to look at this miracle of the moment when Jesus was born into our world. It wasn't something that just happened, happenstance. It was something that God planned in an incredible way. As a matter of fact, if we look in the scripture, Galatians 4.4, 4, Paul, as he writes to Galatians, reminds us about this incredible moment in time uh, of God sending Jesus into the world. Here's what scripture says. But when the time arrived that was set by God the Father, God sent his Son, born among us of a woman, born under the conditions of the law, so that he might redeem us. In other words, God is telling us something that the way that he created us, the way time had, had evolved according to his plan, at the exact moment of his timing, Christ was born into our world. It just tells us about something about the steadfastness of our God. He knows. He's aware of timing. He's aware of the timing of His Son coming into our world, and He is aware of the timing in our lives. Trust me. That's what Christmas means to us as we stop and think about how 
how God sent Jesus into our world. I like the phrase that Paul uses, but when the time arrived. It is that idea of time being pregnant, okay? In other words, time was way out here, you know, and God was telling everybody, hey, look, all the signs are there for the Christ child to come. Get ready for it. And yet the sad thing is some were and some weren't. I wonder if you're ready, really ready in your life to celebrate Christ and all that he means to us. So let's look at it. So what was pregnant about that time when God sent Jesus into the world? That's what Paul's trying to, to remind us. Well, he came at exactly the right moment. And let's look. What does that mean? We find that uh, we don't find these things necessarily in Scripture. We find them in history. What are all these things that God was looking for and waiting for, timing for, so that when Christ came into the world, it would be the most beneficial time? I don't know about you, but I'm a little selfish sometimes. And I say, well, wait a minute, God. I would have liked Christ to have come in my time. Have you ever thought that before? Yeah, I mean, how beneficial would it be for me to see him and for me to touch him and for me to see a miracle done. I mean, God, that's what I want. But that's not what God decided. And as we look into uh, the timing of God, we, we stop and, and just think, God, how wonderful you are to know all of these things. So the first thing we want to look at is that when Christ came into the world, it was a time of peace. Now that's always Miss America's answer, isn't it? You know, what would you like to see for the world? I would like to see peace. Well, it is amazing that in the time when Christ was born, it was an incredible time of peace because the Roman Empire had pretty much conquered the world. Okay? And so all the nations around, they were under a Roman influence, Roman control, Roman soldiers were there to keep the peace uh, if, it, if it got out of bounds. So literally, because of this incredible kind of peace, you could travel anywhere in the world without a passport. Okay? It was sort of like open borders because it was all Rome's. Now stop and think about that. If God is going to send a message into the world, wouldn't it be great for it to go out to, into the world with no boundaries? Well, that's exactly what we see at the exact time Christ was born. There was never a time before that time that was like that time. There was never a time after that time like that time. So it was an incredible time of peace in the world because of Roman domination. The second thing that we see that it was the world was united by a great system of, what's the word? Roads. Then you think, what's that got to do with the birth of Jesus? I mean, after all, you know, that just happened there in Israel. And, and the Mary and Joseph just had to go from Nazareth down to Bethlehem. I mean, who needs roads? Well, here's why you need roads. You know, the United States of America, we have what is called the interstate system. Everybody aware of that? The interstate system? I love the interstate, don't you? And I love it now that they're raising some of those, you know, speed limits to 75. Yeah, you know, it's exciting. What it means is we can get from one place to another fast. And so it's exciting. Well, in Jesus' day, because the Roman Empire had gone into all these other lands and taken control, they needed a way to move their military as well, any place where a problem would occur. And so they made, in a sense, a system of roads that connected the world together. Now, here's why that's important. If you have God coming into the world, and you want the message to get out, how are you going to do it? Sorry, there was no internet at the time, okay? But there was a system of roads by which the message of Christ was going to go around the world. And we see the apostles exactly doing that very thing. We see Paul taking the gospel and getting outside the regions of, of Judea and Galilee and proclaiming Christ. So it was an incredible time in history, the first time in world history where we had this incredible system of roads so that messages and goods could travel. And 
God said, I'm using that to proclaim my kingdom. The third thing that we see is that there was religious freedom at this unique time in history. Again, with Rome Empire power, Rome had issued an edict around the whole world that anyone who was under their power would have to say, Caesar is Lord. In other words, it was Caesar worship except, except for the Jews. The Jewish religion had, uh, had fought this and had over a hundred years fought Rome on this. And finally, one, one day Rome said, okay, okay, the Jews can worship Yahweh. And it's okay with us. We know it. We know they're not in rebellion. They're going to worship God, their God. And that's fine. And so they got this incredible exemption. And here's why that's unique. Because the Romans saw Christianity as just an offshoot of, guess what? The Jews. And for the first 60 years of Christian, of, uh, from the birth of Christ, uh, 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 and 60 years, 60 years A.D., the Roman Empire says, you know what, those Christians, they are just Jews. It's just a sect of Jews. We're not going to bother them. We're going to let what they preach go around the world. So it's an awesome thing. God aware of this in the incredible time. Number one, two, three, four, uh, there was a universal language at this time. Okay? Now again, you and I know, know history. And follow the book of Genesis. We see, you know, there's Adam and you come to Noah and destruction of the world, and a, a new race, you know, a, a Noah's offspring. And about chapter 11, we see something. They got together to build this incredible tower, the Tower of Babel, okay? And God came down and confused men's languages at that time, so they couldn't conspire together against God. And from that time until about this time in history, uh, the world had many different languages under the Roman Empire, there became a universal one language. Anybody know what it was called? Greek. It was Greek. There were other languages. Everyone aspired to know Greek. As a matter of fact, as we have the New Testament, we have it, the original language is Greek, that it is written in. And what was unique about that is, again, the gospel, as it was printed, as it was shared, could go around the world without much translation. And people would begin to understand this incredible Savior that came to the world. The first time that that condition existed since the Tower of Babel. Isn't that awesome? Um, then there was this. There were cells of Old Testament believers, Jews, who had moved around the world. I mean, you go to any of the different cities that were in the world at the time, guess who you're going to find there? You're going to find the group of Jews, Old Testament believers, who are worshiping God. And here's why that is unique. It's because when Paul then begins his journeys, when he finds a town, guess where the first place he goes to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ? Somebody help me say it. Where was the first place he would go? He would go to a synagogue. Why? Because those believers knew the Old Testament and they knew the promise of a Messiah. That's where the church is. When you stop and think about the God, your timing is so impeccable. You knew these things would all come together to promote your coming into our world. And that's exactly right. You see, the gospel doesn't just enumerate these things for us. It lets us look in history and understand the incredible wisdom of God. And then, these aren't all, and then there's this one other thing. Then there was that census. You remember? Caesar Augustus made a census. And here's why that is so important. Because Joseph and Mary lived in Nazareth. Remember that? But because of this census, Joseph was going to have to go down to Bethlehem with a pregnant wife. And one of the things you know is you just don't travel with a pregnant wife. I mean, it's just not good. But he had to under these circumstances. And he had to to fulfill God's incredible plan that the Savior would be born in Bethlehem. 
You see, our God is awesome in his timing. He knew, he knew all of that in deciding the time and the event and the way that Jesus would come in to our world. And as we celebrate Christmas, that's what we're celebrating. God came in to our world in a marvelous way. In a marvelous way. Now, you know what's interesting is we don't know exactly the day that Jesus was born. And that's not important to us. We don't know even exactly the year that he came into our world. What we do know is that he came into our world according to God's unique plan. That would benefit the whole world as he came into our world. And so that brings us to the next point as we look at the section. And that is that he provides... He provides the right moment in our lives as well. You know, sometimes, how many of you get the feeling sometimes God's not listening? He's not even aware of me. You get that sometimes? I mean, you go through circles, God, why is this happening? I don't understand what's going on. Do you even care? Do you know? I want you to know that Christmas and the timing of Jesus coming into our world tells us that God has our timing in mind, too. He has not forgotten us. He provides for us at exactly the right moment. Let's look at some scripture. Psalms 145, 15 says, All eyes look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. In other words, God says, I know the timing that you need, and I'll provide for you exactly when you need it. Psalms 104, verse 27 says, All of them wait for you to give them their food at the right time. Uh, Deuteronomy 11, 14, speaking about Israel, says, I will provide rain for your land at the proper time, and the autumn and the spring rains in your harvest, you will harvest your grain, new wine and oil. In other words, God says, I've, I've got you covered. I know exactly what you need. I'm going to provide it when you need it. Romans 5, 6 tells us today, for while we were still helpless, at the appointed moment, at the appointed time, Christ died for the ungodly. I am sure that you can look at points and periods in your life when you knew God's timing was perfect. For you and your situation. I mean, it couldn't be any better than the circumstances and situations that happened to you. Chuck Colson tells about the trip with his prison fellowship ministry. Uh, he was traveling with the, the Christian singer Kathy Tricoli. And uh, she sang the song, My Life is in His Hands. You know that song? And uh, so they were going to these uh, the prison fellowships and singing that. And he said, after one service was over, one of the inmates came up to Kathy and says, I really want to thank you for singing that song. It, it ministered to me so much because my soul was just so dry. And, and so she asked, says, well, why is that? And he answered, well, I'm, I'm here in prison, and I have a lot of time left to serve. And I received a letter this past week from my wife asking for a divorce. So just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, they did. And I felt like there was nothing left for me, but now I realize that my life is in the hands of God and that somehow it will be okay. I really want to thank you for singing that song. It's so much to me. And so um, they went on. Five days later, they uh, went to Chicago, Illinois, more than a thousand miles from Salem, Oregon, where they were. Uh, they were preaching, singing in a prison there, and Kathy sang that same song, My Life is in Your Hands. And afterwards, a woman who had never been to a prison fellowship meeting before came up to Kathy and said, You know, I, I really want to thank you for singing that song. My soul has been so dry. Almost the same words that the prisoner had shared. And then Kathy asked, Well, why? She says, You know, my, my husband's been in prison. And I felt like I couldn't put up with it anymore. So I wrote him last week and asked for a divorce. But I am not at peace about it. Guess who her husband was? It was the guy they had talked to five days earlier. But they met in Salem, Oregon. So let me ask you. 
Is that coincidence? Or is that the incredible timing of God? Because you see, in that instance, in that instance Kathy was able to minister to her, and now God is sending that marriage and bringing them back together again. Now, I realize it doesn't always happen like that. You don't always get instant answers to your prayers. But what I do want you to know is this. That God's timing in your life is perfect for His will and what He desires to accomplish in your life just as His timing was perfect for the coming of Christ into our world. In Kansas City, there was a, a tradition known as Secret Santa. Have you heard of that before? Um, every Christmas, that Secret Santa would uh, find people who were down and out, slip them an envelope with a brand new $100 slipped inside it. And, of course, the recipients are always astonished, you know, I mean, receiving $100 Christmas time. And uh, someone tracked him down, tracked this secret Santa, and asked him, well, why do you do this? And so the man replied how his life had been blessed with an extremely um, generous man. Um, uh, in 1971, he was an out-of-work salesman. Uh, he was uh, reduced to living out of his car. One morning, he had not eaten for two days. He was incredibly hungry. So he walked into a restaurant in uh, Houston, Mississippi, ordered breakfast, no intent of paying for it, couldn't, didn't have any money, but he was so hungry. And as he was eating his breakfast, he was wondering how he was going to pay for it or how he was going to get out of there without them finding and noticing him. And so when the check came, he fumbled around in his pockets, pretending to have lost his wallet. And the owner of the diner had already sized him up, knew he didn't have any money. And so the owner came around the counter, approached the man, bent down as if to pick up something. And the owner said to the man, Well, it looks like you dropped this $20 bill. And now the man had enough to buy the breakfast and a little more to keep for the road. He never forgot the generosity, the goodness, and so now he gives to others as someone once gave to him. God's timing. In God's provision is excellent. And we need to trust His provision for our lives. And so that brings us to the last point, and that's this, that He says, He says to you, now is the right moment for you. Now is the right moment, if you don't know Christ, to receive Him as Lord and Savior. Now is the right moment, if you haven't been moving in His life, to begin moving as He has equipped you. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2 says this, As God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For He says, In the time of my favor, I heard you, and in the day of salvation, I I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of God's salvation. You see what he's telling us? He says when he works in our life, that means the timing for us is now to receive what he is doing. Okay, let's go back to the Christmas story. We have the Christ child being born into the world. And out on the hillside, there are some shepherds there, and they're shepherding their sheep. They're busy shepherding their sheep. And the angels appear to them and sing that song, you know, Gloria, you know, that song, you know, sing that to them. And that was God's call to say, now is the time for you to meet. The Savior. The time of them was right. The question is, how many of them went? How many of them went and responded to the timing of God? And how many of them said, no, we're not going to have seen a baby before? You know, I think they all went. I think the angel message was kind of good, you know. Impressive to them. Then you have, up in Persia, 
you have some men who are looking at the stars, and they notice that there is this incredible sight in the heavens, this uh, positioning of some stars that says, God is doing something in our world. And they responded to God's timing. They packed up their camels, they headed towards Jerusalem and Israel to see what in the world God is doing. They, they caught on to the timing of God. They go to Jerusalem, said, hey, where is he who is born king of the Jews? Remember that? And of course they go to Herod to ask him. Because Herod was king. Herod knew everything, right? And they said, they asked Herod, Herod, I don't know. And we talked to the priest, well, where's this Christ child supposed to be born? And so they say, Bethlehem. So they make their way to Bethlehem. Herod says, I'll wait it out. You, know, you come back and tell me if there's anything there to see. Remember that? God's timing says, now is the time to go to Bethlehem. Herod said, you know, put it off. I don't need to go down and see baby before. He hadn't seen God's baby before. And he missed it. And so I'm asking you, at Christmas time, God's timing is telling us, now is the day of salvation. John 1.11 says this. He says, he came to that which, his own, which was his own. In other words, he's talking about Jesus there. He came into our world. He came to his own people, the people of Israel. But his own did not receive him. They missed him. They missed the timing. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. What about you this morning? What is it that you have been putting off, putting away, putting to the side, saying, you know what, uh, the timing's just not right, you know, my schedule doesn't flex with God's right now, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to wait, maybe he'll knock me on the head a little harder. <laughs> well, you know, there were people that missed the Christmas message. And despite all of our decorations and all of our singing, they continue to miss it today, don't they? God invaded our world at just the right, precise time in world history. And let me tell you something. You know, as I stop and look about the timing of God, we, we talk about some incredible things, you know, the roads and the language and the communication skills and peace. And I see something very interesting happening in world history. Do you? We are fast approaching a time in world history again where there is a universal language.